obviously I don't want to say this, but I mean, yes. we actually even did it before Beyonce was doing it. I'm so not saying that she was inspired or anything. I mean, I would never say that. And I was like, who the <laughs> fuck is, who's Carl Lewis? Thing. And, and I was lucky enough on my first ever music video to hit some million views. And I mean, this is like the early days of what? YouTube. I don't want to give away. It works both ways. Yeah. I think the most important thing. You say, I always put story first. Yeah, the story I think first. about the money later and that's really screwed me over massively. And, and you know, I think it, it might sound negative, but everyone out there doesn't care as much as what maybe you think they do. And that, and that fur coat, that, that Gucci <sighs> fur coat, had to have a bodyguard following oh, everyone. I think, it was, I think it was like half a million, yeah, million yeah, rand. Yeah, yeah. Didn't that frustrate you? Like, didn't you get, yeah. like, didn't you want to be like, nah, I actually want to blow the cup. And they're yeah, like, yeah. yeah, we actually can't do that. Um, yeah. And I always thought that was really interesting about Ricky because, you know, very often artists, you know, yeah, and I know yeah. this sounds crazy, but I've actually found myself 10 times more creative with restrictions. He's got like 160 million followers. So he's a humongous celebrity there. And, okay. and when I was flown in there, it, it was very VIP treatments. I, stuff I'd never even imagined for myself. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, oh, this is, yeah. the, oh, this is the scale. Okay, got it. And you're live on Dead Radio. Welcome to another very special episode of Dead Radio with your boy, Ini. And once again, we have a legend in the building reporting live from 138 Jan Smuts at the dead store we're going to get into his life story and you know how we do get those jewels for you guys to use in your everyday life so without further ado yeah hey hey hi there my name is Carl Lewis I am a South African director I'm currently with Egg Films but yeah I do a little a little bit of everything music videos commercials and yeah Things the like man that. behind behind the, the lens. <laughs> I'm comfortable behind the camera, so yeah. this is a new experience of being in front of it. <laughs> man, thank you so much for joining of course, us. Yeah, yeah. Um, how are you doing right now, today? You just came in from Cape Town. Yeah, I'm chill, man. I'm good. I'm good. You know, I've got a shoot coming up tomorrow, and you know, like it's always it's always amazing being in Josie. You know, yeah, as yeah, especially yeah. as a filmmaker, you know, I think coming here, this is where it all happens. You know what I mean? And especially kind of film industry wise. So always happy to be here. Always happy to reconnect with my local crew and and yeah, creatives yeah, yeah. here as well yeah i've heard a lot of directors actually talk about the inspiration that you get from just being in Joburg, yeah. like from someone who sits behind the camera what do you think it is about Joburg that inspires people i think i think Joburg, you know what it is is like Joburg's unapologetically creative i think yeah, that's what it yeah, is for me it's like yeah. You're very inspired by kind of anybody here. Like when I see like even fashion trends, it's, it's no one's following a particular thing. Everyone's yeah. kind of doing their own no thing. thing yeah. It's textures. It's, I mean, it, this is where it's kind of at. Do you I know what I mean? That. So I, I can't pinpoint exactly what it is that makes Joburg so inspiring. It's just being here, I think around the people and the kind of creatives like yourself and, yeah. and you know, just yeah. being able to meet different people just makes filmmaking better, makes I it more interesting, that. more yeah. gives it more kind of layers. Yeah. Yeah. that. Yeah. And you're live on Dead Radio. And you're live on Dead Radio. Okay, I think let's start your story from the beginning. Yeah. Where did you grow up? Just tell us about the young car. Okay, yeah. So young Kyle has always, weirdly enough, since I was a child, wanted to be a director. Oh. Like I weirdly enough knew it. I watched uh, <laughs> the, the behind the scenes of Jurassic Park and there's all those Crazy. animatronic yeah. uh, dinosaurs and immediately I was like, okay, that's what I want to do. You know what I mean? And it's, um, since then I just kind of pushed for it. And when I was young in, in high school and stuff, I was already shooting films on, on like home cameras and doing it with friends and things like that, trying to enter little competitions. I mean, we had used to pay people had to pay money to come see our short films kind of okay. thing, you know? Okay. And then, you know, from there I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I had a, an amazing mentor, um, that allowed me and Tonic told me where I should go study. So I went to study after, oh, after as so most after. film students do, you know okay. what I mean? And, um, after Cape Town. It was a great learning experience, but I really think that the biggest teacher for me was the industry. Experience. You, experience, you know, yeah. and, I, and I say that to so many people. I mean, it's important to study, of course, but I think what I really learned was the moment I stepped foot into the industry. Mm. You know, you are kind of completely thrown in the deep end and it's scary at first, but once you learn it, you learn like on your feet that. and you learn so that. much. So, 
yeah, and then I think when I left film school, I wanted to do my own thing. You know, I was one of those kids that didn't want to like assist anyone. You know, um, I tried it, but okay. I think I have a problem with authority. So yeah, the moment yeah, someone told me what to do, I was like, no, no, no. I'm not doing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So I started my own production company um, years ago, and I had it for many years called Dirty Soul Productions. And it's okay. like young. And, I love you know, that name. Yeah, man. And, and it really worked out very cool because the very, very first music video I ever did, I mean, I don't know if a lot of listeners would even remember them, but Lockenville. And they, that, that song, Sun in My Pocket, I got the sun in my pocket. And, and, yeah, but it was completely by, completely by luck, you know, they came to me and I, obviously when you hear artists, especially when you're that young, you don't think, okay, this is going to be this big thing. And, and I was lucky enough on my first ever music video to hit some million views. And I mean, this was like the early days of what? YouTube. I don't want to give away my age, but yeah. I mean, this was the early days of YouTube. When getting a million was actually... Yeah, man, I mean, that was like a, it was like a big thing. We had a party about it and everything. So I was quite lucky. And then from there, like, I work with a lot of other artists, like, I work a lot with Good Luck, um, and okay. loads of videos for them, and, but then I really, I think, believe, got my first really big chance with um, Kulichana. We did a music video with um, um, the Parlotones, um, okay. Sleepwalker, actually exactly 10 years ago, and we actually won Sama for best video for that. Oh, really? And what was really cool about it, it kind of like took me in this trajectory with, um, you know, with Kulichana, and we did loads of videos together, and uh, yeah, and then it kind of snowballed from there, so I think, I, I really do believe he is the person that kind of got my, my foot Pretty into the door, intimate. got people to notice who I am. And I think from there, I had some of the best collaborators I could ever ask for. I mean, Ricky Rick was the Ooh. best collaborator I could have Ooh. ever asked for. And I honestly, I give a lot of um, credit to him for where I am today. I hear that. Yeah, man. I mean, as, as an artist, to be as, as confident as he was to allow me to you know, create and, and, and create art and do something different, you know, that yeah. everyone else was doing, you know, yeah. really helped me like yeah. cut my teeth and really made me kind of learn and, and grow. Yeah. And from those videos, you know, obviously they kind of, I've done it for loads of different people, but then from there, the kind of advertising game kind of took hold a yeah. little bit, you know, and okay. yeah, and I've done a lot of awesome traveling with that as well. So it's okay. been like a kind of cool crossroad into it. Okay, let's uh, Yeah, I've gone a little far into the future there. Let's rewind <laughs> um, and I want to ask your perspective on traditionally trained people and people who learn on their own, right? Yeah, yeah. I find in your industry specifically, I find a lot of people who didn't necessarily go to school become very successful in yeah. that field, right? Because yeah. It's self-taught. It's totally. YouTube.com. Yeah. And you're doing it your own way. Your yeah. own way. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've always found that people who come from traditional learning of something, they do become successful, but I always feel like there's a ceiling for them. Okay, but you're, you're a person who was traditionally trained, mm. but you found a way to break through the ceiling. Yeah. What do you think that was for you? Yeah, it's actually a very good point that you make and something I haven't really thought about. And I think, you know, studying, you know, like I said before, I, like I don't discard st studying. I mean, it's, it's good if that's your path. But I did feel like there was this roof. There was this like way I was told how it's supposed to be done. Yes. You do it this way. You, you talk this way. But yes. then when you decide to do things your own way, because a lot of kids, like when they finished studying, went to go like assist and did research and things like that, which I obviously, you know, commend a lot. But then I did the opposite way of like just, you know, you know young and dumb and hustling my own way. And through that, I broke away a lot of like ways things was, I thought ways things were supposed to be done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I'm my own yeah. way. And I think doing that makes you a bigger risk taker, makes yes. your work yes. more interesting. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's hard to say because, you know, lots of people have different experiences when it comes to True. their careers. You know both I mean? ways work. 100%. Both, both ways, ways work. work. And I don't think one way is necessarily better than the other. But what I do really want to push out there to, to younger filmmakers is that, you don't have to have these hundreds of thousands of rands studying behind you. You don't have to have big cameras and stuff like we, you know, we were chatting. It's all about like having an idea and having a story and, and, and getting that across. Whether you're shooting that on the latest camera or on an oldest iPhone, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's if the idea is there and, and the passion's behind there, it can, it can push you far. Yeah, so I think... Yeah. It works both ways. Yeah. I think the most important thing is storytelling. Yeah. So me and the homies always talk about the skill of being a storyteller. Whether you hold cameras, mm. whether you work in corporate, whatever field, or whether you're just a normal person, one of the most valuable skills you can have is storytelling. Yeah. I agree. Right? Definitely. Okay. 
So um, you get out of school, you start the production company. Um, what were some of those first lessons you started learning? Because I know one of the most important things you have to do to get your name out there is do a lot of free Yeah, gigs. a lot of free. Uh, yeah, a lot of free gigs. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah I mean, I, like it's sad to say it, but I mean, in the beginning of it, I mean, I, I mean, if there was a month that I could pay my rent, it would be super, super lucky. I hear that. And, and you know, we got to a point where, you know, I, I, I love what I do. So whenever I produ produce something and we didn't have the budget, I wanted it to be the best it could be. So I would end up putting a lot of like, earnings from the last video into the next video and then it became this thing that I'd get, have to get a new one to pay off the old one. And so I think the biggest lessons for me came down to money because I always put picture first, I always, like you say, I always put story first. Yeah, story I think first. about the money later and that's really screwed me over massively. And, and you know, I think it happens with a lot of creatives yes. in, in various different fields, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. We want to put the best thing out there and get noticed, but yeah. we oftentimes put ourselves in very bad financial situations because of that. Yeah. But I think, you know, being able to push through that yeah. and just believe in yourself and believe in your vision, I mean, yeah. I'm sure you feel exactly the yeah. same way, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? You're yeah. The, the yeah. proof is in the pudding at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. And it's hard to see it when you're in it, but it is just about pushing until something Ooh. happens because it will happen. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I think yeah. persistence is key in, yeah. in life in yeah. general. You know, like look at all these, sorry to interrupt, but all these like famous actors and stuff. I mean, they make it big after 20 years, yes. not having yes. any roles and all of a sudden they the top then of Hollywood. Yeah, oh, exactly. I think that's a very important thing for us to like zoom in on. Like because Another thing we also talk about is that money isn't the most valuable form of currency, no, right? No, no. So in a in a in a industry like yours or even ours, like relationships can sometimes be more valuable than yeah. money. Yeah, right? I agree. Um, how did you learn about like just getting your name out there in like those early? Days. Really was does. it just like people like reference or uh, referring you or like how, how did yeah I think it worked a little bit with referring but you know what I used to do uh, back in the day I'd always put directed by Carl Lewis at the end okay so you kind of create this like this mysterious kind of persona yes, you know what I mean yes. you're young so you know how these things yes. go you you have that kind of attitude to do those kind of things but I do also think that networking is such an important part of what uh, any creative uh, needs to uh, do and I think mm -hmm. Networking, you know, it's not for tomorrow. It might not be for next week. It might not even be in 10 years, but I always find every time I've network, it always comes out in the future. You know, you all of a sudden need that person or they'll contact you. So I think never, you know, like um, underestimate relationships yeah, and, and, yeah. and creating those kind of yeah. things and, and collaborating. It's also important. Yeah. And money, I think, will always come, yeah. do you know what I mean? And the thing with money, it comes and it goes. And so you can have it one month and it, you spend it. I think when you're kind of like, uh, you, know, um, you know, kind of married to the money and the money is all that it's about, it's always gonna end badly for you. But I think if you put the creative first, mm -hmm. the money will, will, will flow, you know what I mean? I really do, I do believe, believe that, that, yeah. I've okay. seen it time and time again with loads of different creatives, loads of different filmmakers as well, yeah. yeah. Just put in the work, put in the passion, network and exactly. it will come back 100 percent. and you know don't also be afraid you know to if that isn't working for you go assist people you know i think you'd be surprised if you connect with someone that you think would never respond to you and say can i see you on set can i can i like you know like see how you work and see how your treatments are done you know nine times out of ten i love when i get those kind of contacts you know and we i'm happy to share that kind of thing because i think that's what it needs to be when you think about the future of, of our, our filmmakers it's that. going to benefit me and it's going to benefit them if our film industry is thriving <sighs> facts yeah. at that point when um you're starting to do music videos your name is getting out there how are you actively getting better how are you working on your craft right because I've noticed as a creative, right, you're so tunnel vision in mm. what you do that sometimes you need someone else to objectively tell you, yo, am I getting better at this thing? Mm -hmm. Like, or am I stuck in my head yeah, and yeah. in a loop? How are you actively getting better? And did you have people who could objectively tell you, yeah, this video is better than the last one, or nah, mm. this one is shit. Yeah. Like, did you have someone like, to talk to objectively about the art. Okay, yeah, I mean, 
100%. I think I've, I've always surrounded myself around creatives and, and yeah. things like that. And I'm happy to kind of share that. But I think myself is my biggest critic, you know what I mean? Yes. And I'm proud of the work that I do, but I'm never, I would never think it's perfect. And I think that, that kind of thing, I can never satisfy that perfection means that I will ultimately always get better because I'm like always searching for something new, always searching to, to better myself. And I probably will never in my lifetime feel like I've done something perfect. And I don't think any artist really does feel that way. But it's the pursuit of, I think, that kind of idea and that perfection is what ultimately makes you better in Great. general, you yes. know what I mean? Yes. And I think yes. new gear, new toys, I always like to be, you know, at the forefront of things because I, I like trying out new things, you know, okay. new, new okay. like whether the cameras, these small new cameras that are coming out and, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I want to use the fancier cameras. I'm like, oh, let's try these GoPros. Let's, let's get right in there in these kind of interesting angles and things like that. And I think all of those kind of things and the experience with different gear and different ways will just kind of make you better and I think also at Egg you know um, at Egg Films we've got a very very strong relationship between myself and, and my other directors okay. you know we've got uh, Lebo and Zueli and Imran um, Christian who's with me in Cape Town and we Imran is yeah, crazy Imran and I like obviously um, are quite close because we're both um, Cape Town based but we all interchange cities all the time and it is really amazing to be able to have a group of friends essentially that you yes. can trust with your yes. work and they trust yes. you just as much yes. so we often share our work and we'll ask advice from each other so I'm very very grateful and very lucky to have that kind of relationship and again that. it's making all of us better you know yeah. yeah yeah okay damn was there a moment when in the beginning or early phases where it clicked and you were like okay the dream that I had when I was a kid I'm actually doing it and I'm actually able to pay my rent. I'm mm. actually able. Where, was there a moment where you're like, okay, this is working actually? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I wouldn't say it was very when I was very young because okay. it took a very, it takes a long time to, to come up. And I mm. think mm. it is more recently, you know, working in, in advertising. And I think, you know, I had a really, I've had two really amazing experiences. I, I, I lived in Beijing for a month. And I did a BMW commercial with, with this artist called Jackson Wang. Okay. And he is now the biggest hip hop artist, strangely enough, in, in China. Crazy. He's got like 160 million followers. So he's a humongous celebrity there. Okay. And, and when I was flown in there, it, it was very VIP treatments. I, stuff I'd never even imagined for myself. Yeah, 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 I was like, oh, this is, yeah. the, uh, this is the scale. Okay, got yeah. you. And in that moment, I was like, flip, I, you know, I'm at least going in that kind of right direction. And then I think another point was obviously then working with like artists, like for example, Burner Boy. Mm -hmm. You know, being able to direct mm -hmm. Burner Boy made me just feel like as much as, you know, I, I see that with, you know, all the artists I've worked with locally, going with that kind of internet, that next level international, yes, just yes, feels yes. like, okay, I'm progressing. I'm, I'm getting ah, somewhere. And, okay. uh, you know, I can pay my rent, I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can buy clothes. You can go out, you can... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Live. And you can just like almost like take that moment of you, you can breathe out for a second, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But having said that, you know, like right now the film industry, it's, it's hard to navigate at the mm -hmm. moment because, mm -hmm. you know, things, and I know a lot of directors are, are struggling right now, just the work isn't flowing like it used to, you yeah, know, and, and yeah. I think it comes down to, to the, you know, economic kind of situation the world over, mm -hmm. you know, it's not mm -hmm. just here, but, you know, I know a lot of people are struggling to, you know, push that narrative. So that's also another thing is to, as a filmmaker, never feel like you are safe. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, things can change like in, in a heartbeat. In, in, in a second, it can change. You can be on top of the world and all the way down or, or vice versa. Vice versa. Yeah. Yes. So just always being kind of open to that and never, I think, being too hard on yourself in those moments. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it will mm -hmm. change. Damn. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I hear that, especially from being the biggest director to next day your phone doesn't ring at all. Yeah, and it happens, man. It happens yeah. often. I yeah. mean, it's like, you know, you think to yourself, it, 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 I, you know, I'm at the top of my game. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, maybe the phone calls don't happen so often and you're not doing mm -hmm. as big a jobs. And, you know, it's, it's a humbling thing. I think every now and then we need to be reminded because I think we, we stop working hard when we think we're safe. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if there's yeah. always this idea that I need to hustle at some point, you know, I just think that I'm always consistently pushing myself. Even that. now in advertising, you know, like I, I want to be, you know, and I want to get more into like narrative films and things like that, you know, and, and, you know, kind of pushing myself and out of my comfort zone and doing those yeah. kinds of things a little bit yeah. more. And because, yeah. you know, you can be at the top of your game in advertising, but know nothing about the, the, the people who are doing the feature films yes. and the TV series yes. and things yes. like that. that yeah. I've always seen that it's tough for directors to switch in between all of these different yeah, yeah, yeah. things. When right? we, we should be able to just do yes. all of it, but we and are very separate wondered, for some reason. What, what? Why? 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I know for a fact, I mean, I've got a lot of friends who do who are in feature forms and, you know, they make huge movies and it's a huge sacrifice because with advertising and even with music videos, if you do it consistently enough, you can make a living. But with, with film, that is years of sacrifice. Mm. And then only after years, your films come through. So a lot of my friends who've been doing it have been, you know, really suffering for a long mm. time, but now are reaping the reward of all that hard work. You know what I mean? So, so it's a harder game to get into. Film is long term. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You'll work on a feature sometimes in numerous years. You know, you work on it for years and I years and then it gets made. Whereas obviously commercials and music videos are great. You get told one week. And sometimes with these guys, especially with music videos, they're always like, oh, can you shoot in a week? I'm like, bro, <laughs> <laughs> if you want it to be good, give me at least like two weeks. <laughs> okay, yeah, just to like work on the shots, think about exactly, it. Exactly, yeah, okay. which is nice because I think, you know, with the, when you're moving fast, you're always learning new stuff, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I, I do enjoy it, but uh, my, my movie will come. You'll, you'll I, see I, it's, yeah, it's going to be good. I, <laughs> I think actually just even speaking to you right now, I I've picked up one of your superpowers is curiosity, yeah. right? Yeah. And curiosity is such a big thing. It doesn't matter what you do, mm. right? But as long as like you're hungry to learn and keep moving, totally. like, damn. Okay, let's but get that's back. A good, yeah, but I mean, I actually like to, you know, like, um, you know, you know, touch on that. I think that that's what makes any creative, you know, is is that curiosity yeah. and that that want yeah. for something new. And I mean, at the end of the day, we are observers, we're listeners, we yes. we observe and we take in yes. in in any type of way, whether we, you know, to tell stories, to yes. to make fashion. It's yes. it's all of these kinds of insights that help creatives yes. in in general. Yes. And I think yes. if you lose that curiosity, you're gonna lose it's lose done. it. Yeah, it's, it's done, done for you. you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get back to your timeline. So now things are working. You spoke a little bit about Ricky, and I think for me, that's the first time I saw yeah. directed by Kyle mm. Lewis. And I was like, who the <laughs> fuck is, who's Kyle Lewis? And this video, cause Ricky was also that person who actually took the standard of music videos to another mm. yeah. level. How did you guys connect? And tell us about you guys shooting Situ Kotini because, mm. wow. Like when I watched one of that, my video, favorite videos, that video yeah. could come out today mm. and still be one of the best videos yeah. out. And that, and that fur coat, that, that Gucci <sighs> fur coat, had to have a bodyguard following oh, everyone. I think, it was, I think it was like half a million, yeah, million yeah, rand. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it, it was a really great, uh, that was one of my more favorite videos. But you know, I, you know I'm, I will always, forever and ever be grateful for my collaboration with Ricky, you know, I think, you know, like I was saying before, you know, he, uh, he's instrumental into where I am now. Mm. He contacted me randomly and we first, we did, our first collaboration was um, a video of Futsach and oh, we did it with, uh, with um, Anati and, you know, and Casper, you know, and that was really early on. I mean, Casper was even kind of new at the time, you know what I mean? And that's actually how I then continued doing stuff with Casper was also through that okay. video. And then something happened. I was like magic in a bottle. It was so random, so like last minute, but you know, we just created something that just really worked and it was really amazing. Even that video. Yeah, like... yeah. It was, it was really one of those moments moments where we, I think we all collectively felt like we, we leveled up, okay. you know, we were like, okay, this is somewhere where we taking this somewhere new and super proud of what we did. And then we did a really special film. Um, I think this is probably the one that's probably closest to my heart. And we made a film called Exodus. Exodus. Yeah. And Exodus was, um, the, the family values like yeah, film, like film. a short, a short yes. film. Yeah. Yes. You know, and I know when I watch it now, I actually get quite emotional because some of the some of the scenes in it are so prevalent to to obviously what happened and 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 what has come out about it, and you know, it hits hits you emotionally when when you watch it, and it's, and it's very rare for me to look back on a piece that I've made myself and yeah. feel like that. Yeah. Um, but it was just something that you know, you know, to be allowed as as a creative to be free, create art and do whatever you want. He'll always obviously give me an idea of what he wanted, okay. but nothing was too crazy. Nothing was too out there. And I think, mm. you know, you very rarely get that with, with artists. Yeah. Yeah. And just the creative yeah, freedom, the too. creative freedom. Cause you know, he knew from himself, like I know that he is, was a lyrical genius, yeah. a musical genius, yeah. but you know, yeah. I, I had so much respect that he would kind of see me on that kind of level as well, visually, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And then for a young yeah. filmmaker, I mean, it cha changed my whole life. Because doing yeah. videos before that, you know, for, for like good luck and stuff, it was like smaller. But from yeah. there, just yeah. then, obviously, gone. Yeah, went like, big. Yeah. Shit. Like I was watching that video, the Sidlu Kotini video today, and I yeah. was just like, oh my god! Like it's so simple, mm. yet so effective. Like the shots, it was like 
that's actually how it feels to go watch Ricky perform. That like was exactly his. Captured it. But so that's exactly well. was his brief to me was okay. that he wants to feel what it would feel like to be in the audience, like okay. not like this, like you know, performance fit. It's wide shot. He wants you know how you feel when you're watching your favorite act and it's sweaty and you're right and it's smoky. That's what he actually wanted to capture that moment. Okay. Even with him and we were like, I mean, I, we weren't the first, but we were strapping GoPros to yes. mics and stuff like that because he wanted right in his face as well to kind of you know give that kind of thing and like you said it was this super simple idea but it just was so it's effective so impactful yeah. like damn so i noticed there's a golden there was a golden thread in terms of like your style at that time yeah, right? yeah. there was like a lot of gold um it was very artsy mm. and what it made me think of is that you have creative principles Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what they are and I don't know if you're even conscious of mm. them. Right. But you definitely have the eye and you don't compromise on the art. Because I was also watching the bad hair film mm, that yeah, you did with Nasty. Yeah. Right. The golden thread of the gold mm, is yeah. also in there. So even the war video that you mm. did with Casper, like I was like, you guys brought vultures to the township. <laughs> yeah. And there's a scene with a horse. Mm. But like all of those videos, like it's not your typical music video. It's not girls dancing yeah, in the background. Yeah. So I was like, does Kyle have creative principles? Are there things that you believe creatively and you won't compromise on at all? Yeah, I, I 100%. And I think, you know, when it comes came to videos, especially in that time, I wanted like visuals to say something, to have a message. Yeah. Whether yeah. the audience understand it or they come up with their own message behind it was, mm. I just wanted it to start conversations. It was so important for me. And sometimes conversations are creating things that shock people. Yes. That make yes. them go, whoa. Yes. And, you know, I just feel yes. like, you know, music videos are like a medium where you can express yourself in any type of way whether it's you know you want to be political about it you want to like say a message about it this is the format in which to express that i think i wanted to never do anything traditional i think maybe that's where my principles yes, come in is yes, not to yes. do anything traditional i mean yes. we've seen hundreds of videos in the same tonality over the years internationally and locally but why not use this this platform to say something to yeah. to you know you know get people talking and and it's so interesting i actually always love reading the comments on videos because uh -huh. sometimes people get it so far off, off but i'm like fuck i love that approach yes, yes, yes. but then they sometimes they get it completely spot on and i love that that visuals can have make us have conversations yes, yes. and make us like you know think a little bit deeper and i think you know you know visually i've always loved contrast and i think that's why i love gold and 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 i like you know bringing things that you know kind of might not necessarily mix together that juxtaposition but when they do it just makes a whole hell of a lot of sense all of a sudden you know what i mean it's yeah. like so yeah, I mean, there's loads of things and, and things that I would, I suppose, it, it depends, things, have, things evolve. So, mm, you know, I'm not, mm, not mm. too sure, but I, mm. I, I just don't want to make anything that ever feels that it would exploit anyone negatively. I hear it that. Only, I it, hear you know, that. only is, you know, creating a space and a place where, you know, we are seeing people in interesting ways and, and, and in dynamic ways as well. So I hear that. Advertising is, is like a, 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 a rope that I need to kind of like tread very carefully with, you know, mm, consumerism mm, and mm, stuff mm, like that. Mm, you know, to be, mm. So I've taken that principle very much into the advertising, into the advertising space, world, how yes, we yes, cast, yes. how how we how we dress how we do everything all comes from a considered place it's not yes, just yes. you know there, there is no room to, you know for like you know exploitation or, or, or like some things that are like you know not you know i don't know i don't know how else negative else to say. Or yeah and i just think that you know that. advertising can go in that kind of way because we're just trying to sell stuff I you know that. and people people are being sold stuff daily I what people that. want to see is a reflection of, of themselves and something and something that you can see the filmmaker understands them or or, or shows them something that makes them think yeah you know yeah. And I think, yeah. again, like any young filmmaker, that is, that is the golden key. And I've seen time and time again directors who have been gone from nowhere to, to massive because yeah. they make these very thought-provoking films. I, I even look at that. someone like Imran, um, you know, Christian at, at Egg, you know, brilliant. I mean, incredible photographer, but he's translated that so powerfully into, into filmmaking. Yeah, into film now. And, yeah. you know, yeah. because every frame has a message yeah you know and yeah, whether you see yeah. it or don't see it he, he knows it's there and i think with that kind of passion that layering is why it stands out i hear that yeah, yeah, i yeah. hear that damn yeah i just had to ask you because i was like there's no way that you don't have principles that you stand behind mm. in terms of art and it's so clear if you're paying attention yeah damn 
Okay, um, you, you spoke about Imran, you spoke about the collective of friends that you have. I want to speak about competition, right? <laughs> because yeah. competition can either be healthy or unhealthy, yeah. right? How do you view competition? Do you view other people's videos and are like, ah, I'm gonna kill it or this is shit? <laughs> like, do you compare yourself to other people? How does competition work in your creative life? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's a very hard. I mean, as as a director and as as a creative, you you navigate this as as you get older. Mm. You know, when you're young, you do mm. tend to put yourself against other people and and compare yourself and yeah. like, I wish I did that. I wish I was that good or whatever. But the older I get, I'm, I'm starting to realize that competition is super healthy. Mm. If we didn't have competition, mm. if you were the best at your game, you're never going to show the world anything new because you just like you feel safe. Yeah. You yeah. know, and yeah. you know, I, I like to think, and, and maybe some other directors won't agree, but I'm always very confident if I see something amazing and I see, even though I wish I directed You've it, it. Yeah. I have to say to, to that director that I think it's amazing. Okay. Because, you know, we can all, this, this creative pie, there's slices for everybody. For everybody can have it. And yeah. I think when you try and want to take it all, is when it's not going to work out. I hear that. You know, and this is obviously taken years and years for me to, to get to, to that get place. There. Yes. And there's still times now when you because I mean especially with, with uh, commercials always three directors pitch on something and so then it's okay. always between you and two others and nine times out of ten they're your friends and okay. you know and then there's that moment when you don't get a job that you really wanted that you're like ah oh, damn it and you then know? your friend gets it but then if they get it and then you actually see it and sometimes you look at the ad you're like fuck they made they made the right choice yeah yeah even I can admit that they chose the right director okay. for this piece you know okay. so it's yeah I think I think competition so is like super important mm, mm, because mm. it drives me all the time and it, yeah. it used to drive me in a negative way but yes. now it drives me yes. in, a, in, a in a positive way, way. Yes. yeah yeah because it can go either way it can actually start burning you inside yeah but it can also inspire you yeah because right? what's that whole saying um uh, uh comparison is the stealer of joy mm, mm, and it really is mm, because mm. You know, no one is comparing you other than you. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? I think that's what you know, we're saying. I think that the choice, you kind of make that choice where the competition affects you negatively yeah. or, or yeah. inspires you and pushes yes, you forward. Yes, it, it, yes, is, yes. it is ultimately a choice, yes, I yes, think. Yes, and I think the biggest thing also realizing, it might sound negative, but everyone out there doesn't care as much as what maybe you think they do. Mm. And they're not mm. thinking about you as much as what you do. And mm. I think there's a, there's a sense of liberation in that. Mm. When you realize, oh, no one actually cares. Yeah, they don't actually like, don't care, Yeah, bro. They, they care, they like your work for like a minute, they watch it and they, they respect you, but they're not thinking all these things. These are these narratives that you created. Mm. They're self-sabotaging your own yes. self and yes. your own creative yes. flow yes. because we think we know what other people are saying mm. and mm. they're mm. probably not saying it or they're not even thinking about you at all. At so all. just think about like stay in your lane, make cool stuff and it that. would work out. Damn, I love that. Yeah. Okay, back on your timeline. Um, so everything is going amazing. You're shooting for all these artists. When does TV in terms of commercials, when do they come calling? Yeah. Like, and what's going on at that time? It was, it was actually really interesting, um, you know, like the whole kind of, fl I always wanted to get into the commercial space, but then um, mm -hmm. uh, um, Egg used to have a smaller company called Arcade. Okay. And Arcade okay. would do more content stuff and, and okay. music videos and stuff like okay. that. So they used to, I used to do some of my music videos through them. And then mm -hmm. through there, mm -hmm. then there's like, there, this was this phase where uh, brands used to sponsor music videos mm. but then it became branded music videos and like through that I actually did a couple of things you know I did a, a great piece with um, with uh, Questa okay. and we did it for uh, VW for example so okay. it was like a music video but it was a commercial and then ah. through there I just started getting more and more commercials that mm. kind of were music video but then after a while transitioned themselves into the kind of normal commercial okay. space so like I said before I mean music videos are the reason I'm here yeah. you know what I mean it's, yeah. it's, it's 100% the reason I'm sitting here, the reason I have all the stuff in, in my back pocket, and the reason I still get work today. I mean, to be honest with you, I haven't actually directed a video in over a year. Yeah. But yeah, I still, yeah. when I get briefed by any agency or any client, they, they still bring up the music videos. I it's all about the music that. videos. And at first, it was something I just wanted to shake. Mm. I didn't want to be pigeonholed. Mm. But now I'm really, really proud of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I say it with yeah. confidence, and I'm very happy that that's what people compare me to. Okay. Yeah. I want to speak about. So there's a conversation that me and the homies always have it's about the fact that some of the commercials shot in South Africa are literally some of the best commercials in the world yeah. right mm. and they're shot by people like you who came from directing music videos mm. 
But then when I look at the music videos, just the landscape, they never reach the level of the commercials. Yeah. yeah. So is that just a budgeting thing? Because I, from what I understand, we have the same cameras. Mm. Like we have the same cameras that they have in America or so, wherever yeah. in the world. Mm. So where is the disconnect? I mean, you were a unicorn in terms of like the music videos you were shooting, like they were amazing. But then, yeah, the comparison between the amazing um, ads or commercials and the music videos and why the music videos can't reach that level. Is it just budgeting? Yeah, yeah, man. I think it's, it's completely a budget, a budget situation, thing, a situation. Right? And, you know, you find yourself a lot of time, it's, it's sometimes with music videos, a lot of younger, younger, um, you know, like directors and stuff. So they're still cutting their teeth on things like that. And I think we also have to understand that, like, even our music industry, you know, the modern side of it, you know, is, is relatively new, especially music videos. Yes. I mean, yes, yes. You go back like 10, like maybe 15 years, I mean, mu mm. music videos weren't really a thing. Yeah. And there yeah. was a couple here yeah. and there, but nothing major. Mm. Mm. So I still think that we're in this learning phase where we are going to get better and it is getting better. And I think, mm. like I said, when I compare it internationally, some of our videos really, really are on, on par. that level. On yes. that level. Yes, yeah, right. exactly. You're right. You're right. And you're I think, right. you know, just it is comes down to a budget thing, you know, and I think mm. with, with artists now, it's changed in the last few years because you know artists can't just release two or three music, music videos, videos per album. Yes, they now have to do a whole visual album, or they have to do like loads of things. So that means and you the guys money... started that with the Ricky stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, had it's... that ever been done before? <laughs> Obviously, I don't want to say this, but I mean, yes. we actually even did it before Beyonce was doing it. So I'm not saying that she was inspired or anything. I mean, I would never say that, but we were playing around in that kind of space because, mm. you know, Ricky himself um, studied film. Yes, yes. So he, he had after, in, yes, in fact, himself. Yes, so yes, yes. he understood filmmaking. So when he wanted to make music videos, he saw them as short forms. He saw them as something that was, was above just the normal music video. And I think that's why that happened. It wasn't us purposely going, oh, we're going to go make a movie or, 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 um, or visual albums. Because yeah. even yeah. if you look at that Exodus film, it, we didn't use all the tracks. We used small snippets yes, of it snippets as opposed to the full track. Yes. Um, and I always thought yes. that was really interesting about Ricky because you know, very often artists, you know, they'll come out with a six minute track and then you have to do a video for the entire for thing. The entire and sometimes thing. It, it gets a bit boring, mm. but he's the only mm. artist I've ever worked with that wants, he's like, no, cut it in half, make mm. it a minute. Mm. I'm like, what, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, because I mean, people ultimately go to listen to his album and yeah. he saw this visual thing as an accompaniment piece of art to his album, uh, as opposed to them not being kind of the same okay. thing. Makes so sense. yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that, you know, like I, I see a lot of guys recently doing art stuff. I mean, it feels mm. like, we got, went through this phase where we were doing artistic videos and it kind of like went a little bit backwards. Back to commercial, back to the yeah. same thing that we're all... Yeah, we got the mansions and the big mm. the cars and, and, the the girls. Work, and the girls and mm. stuff like that, mm. you know, and mm. I think it's a disjustice to, to us as creatives in South Africa because we mm. have so many unique visual. I mean, the entire world is looking at South Africa for fashion, for yeah. film, for everything. Music. They, are, yeah. they see us but I wish we saw us how they see us, if you know what I mean, in terms I of creativity. I because that. I promise you, they are looking and, I mean, a lot of the time stealing, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Because yeah, we just yeah. feel that we aren't on that level. Yes, But we yes. really are. I mean, our ideas are on another <sighs> level in, in terms of just, you know, general storytelling. If you look at a lot of our films now and, and, our, mm. and a lot of the shows on Netflix and stuff mm. like that, you mm. can see, you know, we always said mm. South Africa doesn't know what they're doing, but when we're given that platform and we're given the budget, you're like, we're just as good, if not better, than if the rest of the world. Better. Yeah. Okay, damn. Um, you've been now in the commercial space. Uh, what's your favorite thing about directing commercials? Yeah, I mean, I, love, I think commercials, it's a scale you know, that yes, you can work yes, at. Yes. You can play with cool toys and cool equipment mm. and, you know. So the resources. I think the resources, mm. yeah. I mean, you take it very much for granted, um, you know, when you are doing it. And I just have to think about my, my young 20-year-old self. Mm. If I could see the kind of gear I was working with mm. now, no. I mean, I'd be like, whoa, I thought it would be, you know, you could never achieve that. I so that. I really enjoy that and I really enjoy collaborating in these short little bursts because every time you do a commercial you work with like a different cinematographer uh -huh. different stylist and things like that and, and there's there's a real privilege in being able to collaborate with so many different people mm. all the time and, and, mm. and find out different kind of um, how way people work yeah and then you realize yeah. for certain jobs this person is perfect for that job and another person's uh -huh. perfect for that job so yeah. 
I really think I've met some incredible people and gone to incredible places I never would have ever gone. Mm. I mean, going to places like, you know, um, you know, China, for yeah. Beijing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was the most incredible experience I've ever experienced, but would I ever have paid money to go do that? And would I have ever been able to, would I ever experience yeah. that if it wasn't for advertising? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like we shoot often, you know, in Africa, shooting in Lagos. I love shooting in Nigeria. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And, and mm. I don't think these experiences I would have had had it not been for for advertising. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I think yeah. that's part of it is, is for me, you know, the best part of it. And, and it comes with a lot of years of experience. But yeah. 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 As someone who started doing creatively what they wanted to do, then you flipped over to the commercial space where you have a brief yeah. and you have to color within the lines. Mm. Right. Didn't that frustrate you? Like, didn't you get, yeah. like, didn't you want to be like, nah, I actually want to blow the cup. And they're yeah. like, yeah, we actually can't do that. Yeah. Like, it, it was really hard at first, mm. I, I will say, because, you know, mm. when you are running your own company and, and you're doing everything for yourself, no one's telling you how to do things. Mm. So when you go into advertising, it's hard. But I think, you know, you learn, you learn how to still get what you want. Mm. with you know with kind of collaborating a little bit you know mm. when a client asks for one thing I have my idea it's the way you word it to them to make them feel okay yes you, you're hearing me but I'm still kind of getting what I want it's it's really a communication thing because ultimately they they do trust you and they know they know that you know what you're doing but you know they've got like so much pressure from behind them so they want to make sure it works so that's why they kind of sometimes feel like they need to micromanage yes yes, yes so I think yes, if you can yes. assure them that what your approach is perfect for it and it is mm. good and it's going to look great you know it can put them you know at ease, at ease yeah, and I know yeah. this sounds crazy but I've actually found myself 10 times more creative with restrictions because okay. when your mind can go anywhere it goes anywhere but if you put into this little box like how can I be creative within this little box sometimes I come up with the craziest ideas within uh -huh. those parameters so in some ways it's it makes you a more well-rounded um, a filmmaker yeah because yeah. you know you're not just doing whatever whatever, like, whatever you want. sometimes it could just be anything Whereas that, you know, people are like making you evaluate it. They're making you look at it from a different perspective. And you're not just like shooting it. You're thinking about it. Like every little layer, everything, every piece of clothing they're wearing, the makeup, it's all decided as, as, as a team. I hear that. You know that. what I mean? Ultimately, obviously, I have the final, final say. say yes, as but I need to make sure that the entire team as a collective is, is happy. Okay. And, you know, okay. sometimes, you know, nine times out of ten, you think that you've got the best idea of all. And it's then, you know, agency or client says an idea and you're like, fuck, damn, that actually that's actually, actually that way was, better. And you know, and I think it takes years and time and to actually be able to admit that, you know, yeah, that yeah, they were right. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn. Okay. Um, 2024, we're living through the age of AI. Yeah. Right? And I feel like creatives are stuck on two sides, right? Some are fully embracing it and others are like, no, this is the worst thing to ever happen. Um, where do you sit and what do you think about AI in terms of like filmmaking? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I, I was one of those when it yeah, first came out course. that I thought, oh my God, they're going to take my job and you're you know, purist. like yeah. I just don't think that a computer can make these ideas. Yeah. But you know, through, you know, giving referencing, especially in, in, in TV commercials, mm -hmm. it's been an incredible tool for me. So instead of it taking my job, it's actually making my job easier in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. And I think, I think having this notion that you're completely against it means you will in some way get left behind. You will. You know, when, when, when we went from film to digital, yes, yes. everyone thought the film industry was over. Yes. And Yes. People adapted. Mm. So this is just a now a new time of uh, being Adapt uh, adapting. Yeah. And you know, I use it often, you know, I have to show someone an example and I just show them 10 pictures. Mm. But now I can take all those 10 pictures and give them one picture. So it gives people an idea and I can conceptualize and sell my ideas a lot easier. But having said that, I never think it should override your own creativity. It shouldn't mm. be the thing that's making it for you. It should be there to aid it, you know, to give you an Amplified. idea, maybe give you a jump start. Like you can mm. use ChatGPT to mm. give you a couple of codes just to jump start your idea, but it should never write it for you, mm. you know. And I think mm. that's like the fine line that we're treading now because obviously big brands and big companies are going to want AI because it's cheaper. Mm. And, you know, you, but, uh, but 
I think you know there's this this line that we must walk because I understand like some filmmakers want to go full into it because they mm. think that's the future. Yeah, yeah. And others are going to be completely opposed to it. But I think it's this middle ground where we can Being use on both sides. Exactly. We have to accept it. You know, in 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 um, even the way we film, you know, we can use AI to extend backgrounds. We can mm. change backgrounds just with like a couple of clicks of of, of you know of of the keyboard. Yeah. Which is incredible. You know, yeah. which is you know can really kind of amplify the filmmaking. So yeah, I mean, I'm you know I'm cautiously optimistic. You know, yeah. I think with all these things, it also does maybe somewhat feel like a bit of a fad, like people jumping onto it. Really, I think out of fear in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it's it's so unknown. And you know, I think w what I was reading the other day was you know the biggest change in in modern society was when they brought in the tractor. Yes. With yes, uh, yes. With, with farming. Yes. How, yes it's such yes. a weird thing to think, yes. and, they, and and people thought that it was going to destroy farming completely, but it, it changed, changed it, it into this. In, yeah. in a whole other industry. So I think that's what's going to happen yeah. with yeah. AI, you know? I, I like to call it the prompt wars. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're living through the prompt yeah, wars right exactly, now. Exactly, exactly. Okay, I love that. Yeah, because um, it's like people who, when the internet started becoming a thing in like the early 90s, they were like, nah, this is a fad. And yeah. all those people got left behind. So yeah. I feel like it's another moment in human history yeah. where something so big and so disruptive is coming that if you don't find a way to walk that middle line you're going to get left for sure i totally agree but i think also at the same time because of that fear of these past mm, things that people mm, are maybe taking mm. it a little too far you know mm. there's these these programs and stuff now that can come, we make things i mean look so darn realistic L I mean, literally give you give it five years as you're not going to really be able to tell the difference i think yeah. as creatives maybe we can mm. but to the general public they don't they don't mind and they can't really see i literally the watched the video of donald trump he's wearing an or orange sweater and he's literally robbing a, a <laughs> gas station and i was like what the fuck <laughs> but you can if you pay attention you, you can, can see, see. Yeah, you can 100%. actually see Okay, I love that. Um, let's switch gears. I want to talk about inspiration, right? Now, someone for you who's actively probably always working, always watching visual references, like what's the most random thing that you do that keeps you inspired that has nothing to do with film at okay. all? It's, a cool, it's actually quite a cool, cool question because I've, I've got two things. I mean, the one is is directed at film, but I actually do free diving. Mm -hmm. um, so I in Cape Town a lot. I actually swim through all those kind of kelp forests and things like that. And, and it's weird. I had a big fear of it as a kid. Okay. And you know, I faced my fears with that, and now I'm like completely hooked. Okay. And it feels like when you're underwater, it looks like a forest and these beautiful rays of light and things like that. So. For me, my biggest inspiration outside of film is nature, and I okay. think it always will be. Like yeah. I've got, a, I've got a really big connection. We we are from the earth. I mean, you can see we look like nature. Literally. Do you know what I mean? Literally. And I think that like as a society, we've gone so far removed from it. Yeah. You know, because yeah. we think we may yeah. be above it, and we're not. We're not. We because we are it. Yes. That is what yes. we are, and I yes. think. That's where I feel my most connected, and when I, it, it, with film and all the stuff, you know, you can feel, you know, like completely disconnected. But that reminds me of who I am and, and I why that. I'm here and that. and why I have passion and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, so I think that's the one thing. And I think the other thing is I I really like creating. Mm -hmm. So I create stuff with my hands. Like a lot of my music videos, if you see 95% of the time, if you see a mask uh -huh. or something, I've made it. Oh, that's I, you. I make all the. I mean, I also. I mean, I don't. I mean, it's a couple of years I did a toy. The lazy video um, uh, Funani, and I made like all these outfits. I don't know if I was having like a breakdown or what I did. <laughs> I made hundreds of masks and, and outfits, and, and you know I'm not like trained in it or anything. I can't sew, but I use like hot glue you know, and things there like that. There's nothing more important than understanding that you can take this table with your two hands and turn it into something else. Exactly, and reimagine it into and whatever you want it to be reimagined right. into. Okay, you know, and I think maybe that's. A line, I think, with AI that also we shouldn't go going, going back to the AI. Yeah, it's like yeah, if you're letting something else yeah. make your creative, it's it's never going to be the same as you tangibly doing something, you know, with your hands. Yeah, I think that's yeah, that's like the big yeah. thing for me. And I think there was one other thing I wanted to say about you know like the AI thing. It's like you know everything that you is pushed out by AI is, has to be referenced. Yes. yes so it yes, takes yes, existing yes, artworks yes, that are out yes. there, and I think. It's sad for creatives to want that. Mm. Uh, creatives mm. should want to create original anything, mm. whether that be mm. film, painting, mm. wardrobe, mm. outfits, whatever you make up. 
Mm. Make it original. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Be the thing that the AI references. Yes. I mean, that's what you should strive for. And I think don't let it look like it's going to steal your job. Rather go, you know, I also say to myself, I've got like 10,000 ideas in my head mm. daily. Mm. So if, if the AI takes my idea or someone takes my idea, it's fine. I've got another 900,000 behind there. You know I what I mean? Yeah, that. You know I love I mean? that. Because that's the difference between a scarcity mindset and an abundance mindset. Yeah. Like scarcity is like you shoot a video and then I copy your video and then my video gets a million views and yours doesn't and you're like ah oh, this guy stole it from me yeah. versus abundance which is like oh he took my idea great yeah. I'll just come up with a new one a new and better idea. a new and better because at the idea. end of the day like people who know know you know what I mean and that that's all that you need to know like I mean yes maybe the broader audience might be like wow what an original idea but the people who know know I and you that. know do you know what I mean that. and I've always I used to get really upset about it um, you know like and it's not like blatant sometimes you know you'll pitch ideas and they don't you don't get the job and then you see those ideas in in the ad or in the music video and you're like I used to get really irritated by it but I mean maybe you should just be complimented yeah, you know, at the same yeah, time that yeah, the idea was that yeah. cool yeah Damn, I love that. Mm. Okay, um, it's 2024. Say Kyle just graduated from after today, mm. right? Let's take it back. Now you're 20 years old in 2024. How would you carve your path through a 2024 lens if you had to start all over again? Yeah, it's it's a hard one because in a weird way when I started it was difficult but almost more simple. Yeah, it was. You know what I mean? Way you, more knew, simple, you knew, okay, yes. I need to get a camera and you do this. Yes. Whereas now yes. you can do it in any type of way. You know, mm. even thinking, mm. you know, like even just, mm. I think I'd really push on TikTok. Okay. I would be okay. pushing on on any kind of social media platform because mm. you know at the end of the day mm. I used to be very precious about. It. I always remember I used to say big things coming. You know, and mm. be very vague about it and then mm. share the the thing only. Mm. Now people, you just put your stuff out there, out there. whether it's good, yeah, whether it's bad. Just be constantly in people's, you know, you know, minds. Face you know what mind. I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. like really important. So, you know, and I think again, like, don't feel limited. Especially now is a very exciting time in history because yeah. we can make films on the phones, phones. that we use right yeah. there. And, yeah. and the, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Some phones are better than some of the the high end cameras. True. You know what I mean? True. And True. we were even talking True. about earlier. Go find an old home camera that a granny had like you know 20 years ago mm. film on that because it just mm. looks really cool yeah. you know it'll I mean? immediately stand out from every 100 percent yeah. yeah and you put that into the context of something very modern like you know like the our um you know uh, one by one framing mm. and things like that but mm. with that old school mm. kind of look as a juxtaposition of bringing the old and the new and re-realizing it you know i think i'd really play in that kind of space okay because i think okay. now okay. to you, it's so broad, you know, we had like two channels yeah. that that's yeah. where you show it yeah. and maybe yeah. on YouTube, you yeah. know, now we've got like yeah. so many different platforms to show, yeah. show content. Yeah. So yeah. I just would say like with, with young filmmakers, it's just like shoot because you always are worried that this is going to be the project that's going to define you. And I'm like of the mindset, just shoot and shoot and shoot. It'll happen. Just don't on think that own. yeah, it'll happen on its own. That project you're working on, maybe it will be your big break, but maybe it won't. But putting the pressure on it all the time mm. makes you not release enough. You just gotta, whether it's good or bad, have the content out there, mm. you know what I mean? I love that you touched on, because a lot of creatives will work on something and be like, I don't wanna show anyone this, this is my crown jewel, yeah, this yeah. is the thing that's gonna change my life. And then when you put it out, it actually doesn't change yeah. your life. Have you had moments like that where you're like, Times dude, times, this yeah. is going to change my life? So I think maybe even every project, you know, mm -hmm. like you have success mm -hmm. from a project, but you maybe mm -hmm. imagine like, this could be like the, the big, wow. big break, you know what I yeah. mean? And, yeah. and you know, like I still, I mean, I don't feel like I'm anywhere near where I still want to be. I mean, I've got a lot of hunger yeah. of like where I see myself, you know, mm -hmm. even though I've been in this game for quite a while, I, I don't see myself as, as, there yet you know what i mean and i think that's also something that i you know like just always kind of want to strive for you know like do more and things like that yeah Fuck, i love that yeah because every creative gets to that point where they're like yo this thing is going to change my life i put it out then you put it out and then they're just like oh really nice yeah, yeah. thanks yeah, and the problem is if you, you put so much pressure on it, that mm, disappointment mm, mm, forces mm. you to almost not want to make the next yes, thing because you're yes, just too yes, afraid yes, to yes, feel that again. But I yes. think if you don't have that as your mindset, mm, that won't ever mm, be the outcome for you. You know, mm, I think mm, many times, you know, like I've done a video and I'm like, wow, I didn't get the views I wanted and I get despondent. And I'm like, I'm never going to do this again. Yeah, and yeah, then I do yeah. another video and it, 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 it's so successful. And then I'm like, flip, you know, if I, if I 
listened to that negative talk and I listened mm. to that the saboteur in my head, mm. I wouldn't be where I am now. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So mm. it's difficult. And I think, you know, I, like I was saying earlier, no creative ever feels satisfied. Yeah, and I think yeah, that's, yeah, 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 that's yeah, why yeah, we're creative. Yeah, that's why we yeah, go out every day. That's yes, why we yes. wake up in the morning because we're not satisfied. We want more. You yes, know what I mean? And yes, I think that's yes. what yeah, it's ultimately It's is. the pursuit of awesomeness, yeah. right? And as long as you're consistently pursuing it, yeah. like you'll always be able to like create. Um, how do you measure success, right? Some people measure success through money. Some people measure success through YouTube views. Yeah. Some people measure success through notoriety. So getting your name out there, uh, people knowing who Carl Lewis is. Some people measure it through their peers saying, yo, what you did there was dope. Mm. How do you measure success? It's interesting, yeah, because I, it's, a, it's a cool question because how I would measure it isn't like my peers in terms of friends and other filmmakers. I think mm. it's more about the crew that I work with. Mm. When they, at the end of it, will tell me I had, a, I had a really great time. You remind me why I do this. Those are the kinds of things that make me truly feel successful, that I'm allowing other people that are also just as passionate of me to be as excited about a project that, that, that I am. Yeah. You yeah. know, like money is one thing. And, you know, money comes and goes. You know, mm. you have it one moment, you don't the next, and, mm. and it, it is a whatever. But mm. the respect yeah. from people for me always makes me feel like, you know, wow, I'm doing good, I'm you know, I'm like actually, good. you know, I'm contributing something to this world, yeah, you know, and yeah, I'm making people yeah. feel passionate about like something that they are passionate about but may have lost along the along way. The way yeah. So when, when my crew feels like they can express themselves wholeheartedly with me, they can like share their ideas and feel confident about it, that makes me feel successful. I hear you that. know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's very important, especially living through a time where money is the most valuable thing. Yeah. Put it people put money above everything and like that's not the only way to measure success. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about, so every guest who comes on Dead Radio, I speak to them about the evolution of their dreams, right? Because I'm always so interested in how people's dreams evolve, right? You obviously from a kid, you knew I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a filmmaker yeah. regardless, right? And then you got in, started making music videos, which then eventually led you to making short films and then which then led you to making uh, commercials. Mm -hmm. What's a new dream for Kyle today that you didn't have six months, 12 months, 18 months ago? What's a new dream since you've stepped into the building of film and you're yeah, like, oh yeah. shit, I started at the music uh, video, which is maybe the first floor, and yep. then now you're on the second floor with like commercials. Like, what's a new dream for you today? Yeah, and it, it's it's so funny that you asked me this because it's something I've been thinking about quite recently, and mm -hmm. and it, I did feel like it was these levels. I always, as a director, I always wanted to do the three tiers of music videos, commercials, and then feature films. Okay, so films. feature films is ultimately where I want to be. You know, okay. I think I'll always okay. do music videos and, and advertising forever because it's just mm -hmm. I just love doing it. Mm -hmm. But I want to make movies. I want to tell tell stories, mm -hmm. and I want to do mm -hmm. something that's mm -hmm. super unique and amazing. And I've, I've I've really been pursuing it right now, just trying to like okay. get things off the ground. I've got a okay got a feature in a short form that's got some funding and things okay. like that you know but i think when you're getting into advertising you kind of forget about those things yes because you yes, get comfortable course, and i think getting comfortable is is you know like every now and then i just like rattle my cage and say can't stop being so comfortable because that's mm. not going to make me grow yeah and yeah i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna make this form it's gonna happen do you know what i mean yeah, i think man. i've always had that attitude when it comes to any of my career that it is gonna happen mm. so i think if you just think like mm. that eventually i mean it has to happen you know yeah, what i mean yeah, yeah, you can't pursue yeah. something for so long and, and you know what i mean happen. yeah and yeah, you know yeah. like how many people like pursue something for 10 years then they quit and then if they just did it for that one more year they could have been the biggest <laughs> Literally, ever, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. So film is yeah. the new dream for Kyle. It's been, it's been ultimately my first dream. I think you know, as okay. a young kid yes, watching yes, films, yes, but yes, I think it's yes. just that kind of like evolution and like full back circle, back kind yes, of coming yes, all the yes, way back yes, yes, and yes. Um, making those films. Because mm. you know, narrative is not an easy thing. You know, no, like it isn't. Captivating an audience for an hour and a half mm. is is mm. not mm. easy. And mm. I've gotten so good at at captivating people for like the three minutes of a music ah, video. Now the thirty seconds of a commercial. Sure. And my brain thinks in very fast, I you know, like that. frenetic kind of visuals. I so that. I would love to challenge myself to slow it down, to like tell a story, to, to like, that. you know, like really and do get something. Get into it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, watch the space. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Um, 
your perspective on the South African film industry just through a 2024 lens. You've definitely seen the changes. You've seen the budgets go up. You've seen the cameras get better. You've seen the editing get better. What's your perspective on just the scene in 2024? Like, are you happy? Are you not happy? Yeah, like, I think, you know, it's it's like up and down at, at the moment, you know, and I think, like, mm -hmm. you know, I think there's a bit of a lull at the moment um, in terms of the amount that's happening happening but the stuff that is being made is of such extremely high quality mm. when it comes to advertising i mean we are we are considered one of the best in the world mm. you know mm. and we were for, for very many years you know mm. i think we don't realize when you go to europe they make really bad ads and you go to america I've heard they that make before. really bad adverts and then you look at ours are really funny and they're sometimes mm. really epic and, mm. and you know they're very interesting mm. they're like very varied um, and I think the landscape in terms of film making features and things mm. are, is, is blowing up mm. in, in a really big way and mm. it's been really amazing seeing some up and coming directors create really incredible content and you're using like vehicles like you know Netflix and, and Prime and things mm. like that you know and really giving South mm. Africa some budget and like I was saying before showcases that we have that talent yes, yes, and we're making yes, these yes, films and I yes, think for the yes. first time ever we even as South Africans are taking our films more seriously. Mm. So remember a couple of years ago, you said a South African film, people are like, oh, I'm not going yeah, to watch that. it, it's a yeah, South African yeah, film. Yeah, 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 but yeah. now you don't even think that. It's like when you're watching a Netflix show, I'm not like saying, oh, this is South African. I'm like, this is just a great show. Mm. It's mm. like on that same scale. kind of scale, I same kind of level. That. So in terms of movie making and, and um, series making, I know it's hard to see it now, but it is changed so drastically yeah, in like, yeah. I'd say like, like 10, 15 yeah. years. You know, we can't Completely. even compare it. We didn't have this kind of industry. We didn't take our movies seriously. It was always like terrible kind of films that made money yeah. at the box yeah. office. Yeah. Now our yeah. movies, our local films are actually making money and they're yeah. actually you know, yeah. out there at festivals and things like that. So I've got a lot of high hopes. I hear that. Specifically for, for films and features and, okay. and, and series okay. at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Damn, I love that. Um, fuck, you've lived such an amazing, like, you've had such an amazing career and I've gotten so many jewels from this. Um, I think as we wind down the conversation, uh, what's your last piece of advice to a kid out there? A kid who's probably an after, a kid who's like, ah, actually, I'm not going to go to film school. I'm just going to buy a camera and then figure it out. Or someone who's just a dreamer out there, who wants to go out there and make things happen for themselves. What's your last piece of advice to the dreamers out there? Yeah, I think the dreamers out there are like really, you know, obviously they, the dreamers inspire me because I am that dreamer mm. and I was, mm. I was that young kid. I was that one that looked at this big bad industry thinking to myself, how would I ever get crack anywhere, it. crack in it? And you know, yeah. it's, you, in hindsight, it's always 2020. So mm. you look back and you're like, wow, I, I, like I did it. But I just think that it is about creating content. Mm. I think your ideas, I think when you sit on them and think that they're not good enough, just shoot them. Mm. If, they, if it works, it works. You, know, you can put stuff out. I put hundreds of things out there that I would never, no one cared about. Yeah. But I put yeah. lots of stuff out there that people do care about. But yeah. the, the fact of the matter yeah. is that I, I was producing things like that. Mm -hmm. And I know there are limitations for people. It isn't, it isn't just easy to get cameras. It yeah. isn't just easy to yeah. study even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's why I'm saying like use any medium that can capture a visual to to um, make your story. story yeah. And I think that's what it comes down to. Tell a story and tell something about what you know. Mm -hmm. I think the strongest mm -hmm. narratives come from from something that you either experience or something that you have an understanding of. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get something very unique because no one looks at the world like how you do. Yes. And if yes. you say from there, you're not trying to be someone else, you're not trying to look at someone else's career it's just all from you and i think that's what i would push and that's something that i really try to do you know in, in the beginning mm. days and i think when you're young you you have that like um you know um bravery to do yeah, that kind of yeah. thing and know? arrogance exactly yeah. you know and i think yeah. you know you look i've been doing if i do half the things that i did now but i'm so grateful for that 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 mm. childish arrogance because mm. that's what got me where i am and i yeah. think another thing is also don't be afraid to ask people that you that are like that you admire advice or if you could be on sets or things like that you'll be very very surprised mm. how accessible we all are mm. how human we all are yeah. it's yeah. not it, yeah. you know and how we all also were in that same position mm. so that means that you know and i've like i mean i remember back in the day i mean this is still like facebook days yeah. but i got yeah. signed with international companies and stuff because i went on facebook yeah. and i found the owners of the companies and i sent out i mean when i say hundreds and hundreds of messages 
you don't overdo it just send yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. and you'll find that maybe none of them reply but i was lucky two replied okay. and those two were the perfect and i got signed um in the uk and i got signed in germany Great. and it was really just about taking a risk you mm. know what i mean reaching out to people. reaching out so i think mm. also just be careful about doing that don't don't overdo it because then mm. that could irritate people yeah. just yeah. send that one thing and you, you never know it could yeah. happen and like yeah. like i said earlier yeah. with networking yeah. you know that networking that you're doing today you know like even us chatting today yeah. might yeah. not be for yeah. tomorrow might be not for next year but it could be yeah. maybe 10 years time and yeah. all of a sudden we're like this is yeah. the time we're going to collaborate yeah. Yeah, the young man. guys, like, you know, you might have a conversation with one of your, your idols and be like, that was terrible. They hate me. They don't know me. But you'll be surprised how that could turn around for you in, in the future. In the future. Yeah. 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 Damn, bro. Fuck. This awesome, has man. been yeah, I appreciate such it, guys. Yeah, an I think amazing it's, conversation. Yeah, it's, it's nice to kind of talk about these kinds yeah, of things. So I yeah, think, you know, yeah. like I always think about like the younger you know guys trying to get out there and do this kind of thing and like how, how scary it is it's scary mm, to do mm, this kind of thing mm. put yourself out there terrifying you know and i think once you over get over that fear you know what what it can happen and i wor always wonder about how many creatives we've missed out on over these years and years that have been too scared to step out and put yeah, themselves out the there. The next Mozart or, or, or biggest director who could have just be in South Africa, but they have that fear in them mm. that they don't want to kind mm. of try. Mm. You know, and I think like filmmaking is about failing. It's about like failing a million times, but then making sure that you get up each time. Mm. You know what I mean? Because mm. I think, mm. like I'm sure you know as well, like failing is what just makes us stronger. It makes us think out the Literally. box. Okay, like, okay, I failed there. How, how can I make it different this next time? Or how can I think out the box? Mm. Yeah, so mm. I think it's weird. I mean, only with age does, do you start realizing that. Realizing that. Negative things are actually helping me in the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. perspective is everything. So totally. damn. Um, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll be back with another episode of Dead Radio with your boy Ini. And you're live on Dead Radio.